Starting a YouTube channel is exciting, but it's easy to make mistakes that hold you back from growing. Are you making some of these common mistakes without even realizing it? In this video, I'm going to walk you through the most common pitfall new YouTubers face and more importantly, how to avoid them so you can set yourself up for success from the start. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Philip, and I'm here to help you navigate the world of YouTube with confidence. Every YouTuber makes mistakes when you're just starting out. It's part of the learning process. But today I'm going to share with you some of the most common mistakes new creators make so you can steer clear of them and fast track your way to success. Let's dive right into the mistakes and how you can avoid them. Not defining a niche early on, one of the biggest mistakes new YouTubers make is trying to appeal to everyone without a clear niche. Your content can feel scattered and it's harder to build a loyal audience. Instead, focus on a specific niche that you're passionate about. This not only helps you stand out but also attracts viewers viewers who are generally interested in your content. Defining it early on is, is pretty difficult to do as a new content creator. Um, even for myself, I struggle. I didn't really know which way to go about it. And sometimes you gotta go through experience of trying different niche. Even if you do make the mistake, you can recover from this. Okay. What will help you find your niche early on is really think about financially, how much is it gonna cost you to even continue to, to push out videos related to this niche. For example, example if you're reviewing shoes and each shoes costs about 125 and just think about it, you have to make 50 of these videos that's gonna cost you five grand minimum that will help you find your niche early on count the cost of creating that particular content inconsistent posting schedule consistency is key on YouTube posting irregularly or going long periods without uploading could cause your audience to lose interest to avoid this create a content schedule that you can realistically stick to to, whether it's once a week or twice a month, consistently build trust with your viewers and signals to your YouTube algorithm that your channel is active. Number three, overemphasizing equipment. Many new creators think they need the best camera, microphone, and lighting setup to succeed. While good equipment can help, it's not the most important factor. Focus on content quality first, deliver value, engage with your audience, and improve your skills over time. You can always upgrade your equipment later on as as your channel grows. Early on, you know, I thought you need the right equipment. This what I found funny is, in some situations, I couldn't bring my equipment, but I used my phone just to record a few videos that I posted on this channel. You don't need to get the best equipment out there. So if you love what you guys are hearing so far, I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe and share the content to other people that are wanting to start a YouTube channel. Now let's get back into it. Number four, neglecting thumbnails and titles. Your thumbnails and titles are the first thing potential viewers see. So they need to grab attention. A common mistake is not putting enough effort into these elements. Take the time to craft eye-catching thumbnails and compelling titles that make people want to click on your videos. This can significantly increase increase your click-through rate and overall views. Neglecting thumbnails and titles. I am going to be honest about this early on starting out my YouTube journey. I just throw a thumbnail and the title. I did both of those things last. If they're not clicking on your thumbnails, nobody's watching your video as far as your click-through rate. You really want to strive to hit 6% to 8%. You can up your click-through rate just by not neglecting your thumbnails and titles. Five, ignoring audience engagement. Ignoring your audience is a big no-no. Responding to comments, asking for feedback, and encouraging interaction shows your viewers that you value them. It also helps build a community around your channel. Don't just treat YouTube as a one-way street. Engage with your audience and you'll see much more growth. Every time you have an audience post a comment on your video, respond right away. Even if they leave negative feedback, respond. This helps show to YouTube, this video has a lot of engagement and they'll continue to, to push your video out to other people similar to your audience. Number six, getting discouraged by slow growth. It's easy to get discouraged if your channel doesn't take off right away. But remember that success on YouTube takes time. Don't don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle. Stay patient, keep improving, and celebrate small victories along the way. Slow growth doesn't mean no growth. It's very human nature to get discouraged by slow growth. Growth. And what I mean by this is maybe you had a goal to hit a thousand subscribers in six months, but 
but now you're barely at 100 subscribers. I'm here to tell you, don't get discouraged. Your YouTube journey is part of the process. The first six months is slow, but the next six months, it starts to ramp up. That's how YouTube is. Sometimes it takes over seven years for a channel to really do well. Think of it as long-term. This yeah. is why I could have posted three times a week, but I thought about long-term, so I just post weekly. Right? When you post weekly, you're most likely gonna be ahead of videos that you have stored up that's lined up for the next two months. That gives you less headache to worry about. So believe me when I tell you, don't focus on what's going on with your channel as far as being a slow growth. Just realize it's just part of the process. Right? Be patient. Number seven, not learning from analytics. Your YouTube analytics are a gold mine of information, but many new creators don't take full advantage of them. By understanding what's working and what isn't, you can make informed decisions to improve your content, regularly view your analytics to see which video performs best, what your audience likes, and where there's room for improvement. In your YouTube analytics, okay, you can check how much a particular video is engagement time. For example, one video could be uh, one minute, then you have another video viewed for three minutes, then you have another video that's been viewed for six minutes. Look into that, compare why this one is getting only one minute of engagement time and why this particular is getting six minutes engagement time. Oh, that's important to compare, then you can kind of get a better idea how you want to go about creating your content and you want to stick the same principle that you got from this six minute engagement and keep building on that. Try to get to seven minutes, try to get to eight minutes. You want to keep on improving. Once you start seeing your engagement time start to go down, there's something you gotta change. Something that you're doing that's causing your audience to either be bored of your video, YouTube provide that service to help you as a content creator, so why not take advantage of it? Starting YouTube channel is a journey and making a mistake is part of the process. But by avoiding these common pitfalls, you can set yourself up for success and build a channel that you're proud of. Remember, every mistake is an opportunity to learn and grow. Now that you're aware of these common mistakes, it's time to get strategic if you're ready to take your channel to the next level, click here to watch my next video, creating a YouTube content strategy that works. We'll guide you through the steps to plan your content and keep your channel growing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.